Look at this guy. He didn't click the like button. Look what he's gonna get. He didn't smash like or subscribe. And this is what you get. You get me to miss, I hit your arm. And then I knock you out. Now you're knocked out. Look what you did. You did this to yourself. Don't make me make me hit you. Knuckle Draggers, welcome back. Knucklehead Gaming. I wanted to do a quick video on some tips. I see a lot of people have questions about how do I get started in seven days to die? It's overwhelming. There's a lot of stuff to do, a lot of stuff to know. I understand it, it's, it can be challenging early on, but I think it's worthwhile effort to invest a few minutes in understanding some of the quick tips and tricks you can do to get started, to get a nice base. You're not dying every five minutes like I did when I started playing this damn game. I swear I would die every day, every minute. I didn't know what I was doing. I was creating stuff. I was making noise. Ah, oh, it was horrible. But, you know, like anything else, take your time. You'll figure it out. And eventually, I did. You get better at the game like anything else. So I have a few tips. I think it's going to be about 12 tips. You'll know when you see the, uh, the label. And I'm glad I found this base here, too, because this is one of the tips. But the first things I wanted to point out, and let's just clear our inventory here. So let's trash everything. So you, you enter the game, you start with nothing, boom. You're just a normal dweeb like the rest of us. You're like, what the hell? The world turned upside down. I see dead people everywhere. It's like the sixth sense, but everybody sees them too. So the first thing I would say, and my first tip is, to get your butt some uh, stone and wood. So the first thing the game has you do when you start is go through a few steps. And those steps are to um, collect certain things to make different um, instruments early in the game, like a bed, some clothing, an ax, a club, a campfire, and then a frame that you have to improve. So the first thing I do is I do all of those quests to get up to the point where I can make an ax. So it'll prompt you to make the stone ax. So we'll get some stone and some wood. So wood, you can hit the trees and bloody your fist and not really get far. Or you can look for these shrubs like this. This will give you usually one or two. There's four already. Bam, bam, easy win. And I already got my wood for the quest. And then it'll ask you to get some stone too. So again, with the stone, you can beat the hell out of a piece of stone over here. Or you can just pick up a couple pieces of stone that you see along the way. Um, of course, I'm not going to see any now because I need to. But if you climb, climb up high, I'll see, boom, there's one. And then I think I saw one over here too. Boom. Okay. And then that'll get you to your axe. And of course, the early game will, will show you exactly what you need to do. So part of that first tip is, yeah... Get a stack of stone, get a stack of wood. Even though it's not gonna tell you to do this when you start the game, it's still good to have. And I carry wood and stone with me all the time when I play this game. And I do it for a few reasons. Wood is good because it gets you out of trouble. You can make wooden frames. So you wanna make a bunch of these blocks, you can do it. I'll make a couple just to show you. Carry those around. Why do you carry wood frames? So I got my stack of stone. I'll show you. Let's get this tree real quick too. So the wood frames, you can get out of trouble. I can use a pile of wood frames, jump on top of them as I place them, like Minecraft style, and get on top of a roof. All of a sudden, I'm, I'm, I went from being in trouble with seven zombies chasing me to being out of trouble. The other thing you can make with wood frames that's important are wooden ladders, which are similar. You can put them up on the wall and use those to climb up the side of a building as well. But if there's a ledge or something like that, you're out of trouble. You'll have to knock it out, and that usually takes too much time. Um, the other trick with the ladders is that you want to place them a couple blocks higher than the zombies can jump. So let's show you. So let's make a ladder. So there's the wooden ladder. Here we've got another creeper coming here. So let's make a couple frames here, or a couple ladders. I can put a frame down here. Two, three. I'm on the roof. I'm good. Is there any way he can get up here? Whoop. Maybe here. 
put a couple frames there to block them. Oh, it looks like I just need the one. And here she comes. Okay, come on. Can you get up here, sweetie? No. See, I've blocked her now. So she's bummed out. Oh, and look at my axe is already depleted. So now I just need to repair it, and I've got stone. Boom. One. Tip two. Use your bed and land claim, Bach. Make new ones. I said Bach. Make your use your bed and land claim block effectively. So what does the bed do? The bed gives you an area of protection, not very large. But if I show you, if you try to lay it down, you will see how much area it protects you. And you can even see it in the description. Placing a bed on the ground will allow you to respawn there when you die. That's important. Placing a new bed or picking up the latest, the last place bed will permanently clear all previous respawn points. Good to know. The bed shows on your map and compass and prevents zombies spawning near it. So that's the critical piece, especially early game. But it's not a very big area. So see that? See those white bars? That's the area. It's going to protect me. Zombies can hear you just outside that area anyway. So it doesn't give you much area of protection. The better thing to do is to be to craft a land claim, which takes a few more stone. Just five, and this will give you a giant area of protection. So if I put that land claim on top of our trailer, which is my number one POI to do early game, even though we've attracted a shit ton of zombies already. Here, I'm gonna grab myself a club too. If I could spell today, that'd be great too. There we go. I got Stone Sledge. So Stone Sledge is number one early game weapon. Come here, Arlene. Is that Darlene or Arlene? I always forget your stupid names. Which one are you? So like I so that's item two. So your land claim block, when you place that down, you'll see a much larger area. See those white lines out there? That's much better for five stone. Totally worth having it. Don't leave it outside. Keep it someplace safe. Now, I would say even on top of the roof here would be perfectly fine for me. And now if you click E, you can see your barrier of protection. Pretty good. So definitely worth having. If you go someplace else and you can't get home, just make another one. This one will go bad. It'll have one hit point left and you'll have to make a new one when you get back home. Just make sure you you mark where you live on your map. So you can do a save waypoint and just say home and then you're good to go. And you'll be able to see it on your HUD up top there. The next part is where I'm at right now. These little trailers, I call them trailers, they're little mini houses, one floor ranchers, they have reinforced sides on them. So it makes it a very, very good early game POI. Not only that, they all come with a car, so you get a free car, beautiful car. Looks like an 86 Caprice maybe. And you get the reinforced door to start with, and I think there's only like one zombie in here to begin with. Yeah, one zombie, let him come through. Hey, buddy. And then, oh, he takes, he's going to take two shots. Not for once. And that's it. Now I got my place. I got my land claim on top. This place comes with books, usually. Look at this. A whole assortment of early game loot, like food. Even get some jars or some peas. Look at that. Beautiful early game. The only thing I do in here when I take one of these POIs, and there's many different types of trailers, and they're all pretty good. And I'll show you what to do later if you can't get through. The only thing I will add to this is I'll poke a hole through the ceiling. Yeah, it might take all night because it's all reinforced, but it's worth it. You'll have a way out. When you get to the roof, you have 360 degrees of get me the hell out of here. Totally worth it in the end game. Yeah, it takes a while, but it's worth it. And that reinforced door, now I don't have to find one. Thank you. 
You're welcome. Thank luck. Subscribe. Like. Ring the notification bell for me. It's all good. It all helps. You gotta do it though. It doesn't take much. It doesn't cost you anything to click the like button. Just click it. Look at this guy. He didn't click the like button. Look what he's gonna get. He didn't smash like or subscribe. And this is what you get. You get me to miss, I hit your arm. And then I knock you out. Now you're knocked out. Look what you did. You did this to yourself. Don't make me make me hit you. I think to spend early game is. But a but a but a but a but a but a drum roll. Somebody give me a drum roll. I'm gonna show you. I know where it is. Why am I not clicking on it? Master Chef. Just one level in the Master Chef gives you golden rod tea. Very use if you very useful if you get um if you get sick from eating bad food. It gets you the ability to make red tea, another good nutritious drink. Coffee, which is like the number one stamina drink early game. Those three alone are completely worth it. Not only that, you can make bacon and eggs, which you're going to get from looting all of your uh, the bird's nest that you see along the way and killing any boars and whatnot. And the grilled meats. By, by far, the best early game skill point to spend is certainly in Master Chef. And what do you need to use Master Chef? All you need is a campfire, which is very simple. Five stones. Takes two seconds to make. Put it in your new trailer park house, your new trailer, and you won't regret it. Eggs and boiled water, it's so easy. And you can boil all your water. If you get all the water from the shitty toilets, you can use that in your in here too. So yeah, definitely use Master Chef early one, early game. Is use the stone sledgehammer early game. Like you saw, I just made it with some plant fibers, some wood, and some stone. It's a one or two shot. You can't beat it early game for melee, I think. Um, don't use the, if you use the power swing. You see, it uses about forty stamina. You could just stick with the regular swing. It uses what maybe 20 15 stamina i think it even tells you if i just looked so a melee attack uh cost 22 22 stamina for just a regular attack and the power is probably about double that yeah 61 so we yeah, have 42 40 40 ish for a power attack so just use a regular attack it's plenty plenty to knock these idiots down you could use this, you know what you could use this hammer on too? And the like button. You just like, subscribe, <sighs> notification bell. Ah, oh, it's so easy. If you get multiple blunder buses, so Alpha 19 has shown me several things that there was an apparently a huge run on blunder bus purchases before the apocalypse kicked in. And I learned a tip on Reddit from another user because I was complaining about getting so many and he's like, dude, just put four of them in your hotbar and load them all. Now you've got four shots. Okay, I didn't say I wasn't dumb, but it makes a lot of sense. You can sell the ones you don't need and just keep three or four in your hotbar. Now I've got a four shot shotgun ready to take out any dummy that wants to come across my way. Go ahead. You don't like my channel? You don't want to like or subscribe? And this is what you're going to get. A blunderbuss in the face. I don't see any guys though. Let's go in here. There's got to be a dummy in here. Are you behind the door? Anyone? Huh. Now we have to find somebody to shoot in the face. Hey guys. There he is. Boom. Did that do it? That one did. Now I've got two more shots. I can reload these. Beautiful. Works like a charm. Great idea. Tip and trick number eight. Elevate. So you can see up here we have one door. If I didn't, if I wasn't able to find my primary POI that I wanted to keep or wanted to have, you could come up into a house like this. There's only one way up. There's wooden steps. It's the perfect mix because these steps are easy to clear out like that. We've already collected a tree's worth of wood. We can get another one if we have to. We have stone. We can knock out these steps and then frame out enough i would probably go to the wall frame it out upgrade it and now you're going to be able to prevent zombies from coming up here at night um, if you aggro them if you do aggro them and they break through somehow 
I don't see how they would. They typically don't. Once you cover this up, they won't see it as a, as a way to access you. You want to have another exit available too. Ah, I can't even get a pistol in a test game. So you'll see here. So we have a window here. Boom. I'll knock that out. And this is my, this, this could be a great early game base. If they got up the steps and they breached, great. Now I'm out here. I go out here. I come up to the roof. I hang out up here. Anything comes up, I knock it down. And it will probably just fall off the roof. But it gives you a way to get out. If it gets really hot, you can go to your backup base, which in this case would be my trailer or whatever else was there. Or it would be, uh, you know, maybe another POI that I could say, okay, I can frame pull my way up to the roof of that house and then get all the way up to the peak of that roof and I should be good. So you have more than one way to get out of your out of your uh, your house and that's going to be crucial early game when you're very weak and don't have much armor. And let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. If I put like four more frames on that. Oops. And I can just put this in here. Oh, two more frames. Oh, just make nine. Yeah, sure. Put your bed down too. Doesn't hurt. There we go. We'll fix those up. And now I have a way that only I can get in. Oh, you might say, how are you going to get in and out then, dummy? Very good question. And that's why I do things like collect ladders. I wouldn't recommend jumping out of houses when you're early because I just broke my leg. But you'll see I can do one, two, three, four. This is too high, which is what you want. Zombies won't be able to jump up too high unless they piggyback. And then, but you can, whoops, whoops, but you can jump up too high. Whoops, maybe you can't. Oh, you know what? Because I'm, there we go. So even though I didn't have enough, I still was able to get up there. The other option you have, if you can't get up the ladder from a jump because it's on this, it's on this elevation here, this, this weird slope, you can either stand here and jump up like that use your arrow key to crawl up or you can put a block down underneath you and then grab the block as you come up the ladder otherwise you give the zombies a way to get up there but yeah perfectly fine way and now i'm completely protected unless there's a zombie in this room no i don't think so oh, there might be it took out that pile of trash and look at that look at the bonus we got so that is the reason that we want to elevate if you have the option to do so. If you want to stay on the ground, use the trailer POI. And I just got myself another stone sledgy. If you come across any destroyed crafting stations, so we can make one real quick. Let's see if I can make a crafting, uh, I would say a workbench. I don't know if that's going to be, I think that's always going to be working though. But if you came across a workbench and it was destroyed, first thing you do is loot it because you might get a schematic for a new workbench, which is great to have, read it, and then you be, you'll be able to build one when you have the materials. If you happen to come across a wrench early game, and you usually get those from sinks, looting kitchens and bathrooms and things like that. You can go up to that workstation, not hit it like that, but you can loot it and you'll see that I'm getting iron bars, which is great. I'm getting plenty of raw iron and I'm getting some uh, mechanical parts. So it's a great thing to loot because you can't fix a destroyed workstation anyway. If you do this to a crafting station, you might get a beaker. Um, I don't know if you, I don't think you will actually. I think the best place to get beakers and that's going to be in the next tip is to know your POIs. So if when you spawn into the world, if you're in a major city, let's see, you'll have different types of stores. So one of the stores could be like the Shotgun Messiah. You have other short stores that could be a Shamway Foods, and then you have Cracker Books, and you have Pop and Pills. Pop and Pills is great early game um, because it'll give you beakers, which are tough to come by. 
and you use those beakers in your either your campfires or you can use the beakers in your chem station you'll need one to build it to make a chemistry station so yeah definitely good to have beakers and to hold on to them don't scrap them and to be always have bandages so you want to always have bandages and you say how do i make a bandage well there's a couple ways so the first thing we could do let me fall to my death Whoop, nope. so the first thing you can do to make bandages is collect cotton and we can get plenty of that just running around and finding it i'm in admin i'm in uh, god mode here so i'm gonna go a little bit quicker so get your cotton together these red flowers are chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum that's how you make red tea and then you can use the golden ones to make golden rot tea so collect them all and once you have enough cotton if you click recipes you can make cloth fragments and once you have enough cloth fragments you can convert those into bandages and then i always carry some around i keep it as the eighth one in my bar so if i'm getting hit i'm under attack I can always scroll over and say, all right, give me a bandy time, but I don't need one right now, so I can't use it. Use that stealth damage. One of the items you create when you start the game is a bow and arrow. So you'll get a primitive bow. You'll get some stone arrows because you're collecting, um, you're collecting feathers from nests and you already have stone and wood because that's your first tip to collect those two things. You can make plenty of stone arrows. And the best part about stone arrows is that number one, they're quiet. Well, this guy already spotted me, so let me get out of his way. Let me see if I can grab a new guy here. Yeah, we could probably find somebody in here. Let's see if we can sneak up on somebody. Hmm. We gotta find a dummy to kill. There's one. All right, so if we crouch, and you can see my little eyeball on the right, a stone arrow will do 3.5 damage if shot from a crouched position, which already pretty much knocked this guy out. You might be able to take one more shot. Maybe two. There he goes. So that's critical. It's really good for hunting too. I would avoid hunting boars because if you don't kill it quick, it's going to kill you. Um, but definitely good early game to know that those... Oh, see how many times I fixed that because I already collected my stone? But very good to know early game. Stone arrows, crouch position, good damage. Use the sledgey to finish them off if you have to. Game over for the zombie. Game goes on for you. Mm -hmm. To avoid trash. So, if you're creeping along, you're going to be in silent mode. You can see the eyeballs tells you how much noise you're making. There are some POIs that as soon as you go into them, you're just going to wake the zombies no matter what. But then there's others that if you creep in and you avoid trash... There's nobody in here. Nobody in here yet. You won't wake the zombies. So let me give you a you know, Here's trash right here, right? I know there's zombies in here because I've done this POI a hundred times. You can knock it out. And they don't wake up. If I go around here. Do I see anybody? Ah, it's the worst example ever. And then there's our trash on the ground. So you see the trash here? Got this. It wants you to step on that. It wants you to make noise. So you can either break it. See that zombie? I can break it. Or I can avoid it. I'm still crouched. And there's one. See? And because I avoided the trash... He's not going to wake up. Now watch. All right, he still didn't wake up. There he goes. 
I knew I was going to take one of them. And I took him out one shot. But that's the tip. So avoid the trash. If you have to, you can crouch and knock it down. Let these guys fall. Two power swings of Sledgy. But see, I'm out of stamina now. So, all plays together. Hey, fella. Did you subscribe yet? You did not subscribe. Now you get the Sledgy. And this time he's going to try to break through the fence instead of walking around. He's a janitor for a reason. All right, that's my tips and tricks. Make sure you uh, check out the channel, like, subscribe, do all that hunky dory stuff for me, hit the notification bell, and uh, I really appreciate it, guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Ooh, he's pissed. That's the biker. All right, guys, I'm gonna try to fight my way out of this. Now I'm gonna hit right in the balls. <laughs> I'd go down too, dude. All right, guys, peace. Oh shit!